The relentless pursuit of scientific truth is a noble endeavor, but not so noble that it exempts us from our deeper obligations to be moral and just. It's the mid-90s. The New York State Psychiatric Institute wants to conduct an experiment researching aggression in young inner-city boys. But some of their methods are questionable. After the experiment was conducted, the researchers came under fire once the details came out. Critics argued that the study was unnecessary and didn't serve to benefit the children involved, or any other children for that matter. So what really happened in this experiment, and was there anything deeper or darker at play? Researchers were looking for subjects to include in their study. They mainly wanted, very specifically, the healthy younger siblings between the ages of 6 and 10 of convicted juvenile delinquents. So, they contacted probation authorities, who granted them access to confidential information regarding juvenile offenders in order to recruit their younger brothers for the experiment. And if that sounds really super duper illegal, don't worry, I'll adjust that later. According to grant requests, the study was limited to only black and Hispanic children, but prior to approval of the study, the Institutional Review Board, which was the ethical oversight panel, forced them to strike the racial limitation from the study. The board also failed to address the fact that researchers had identified candidates using confidential information obtained from the probation department. But even after this, and once the study was approved, the researchers continued to pursue racial groupings. They reached out to families within their desired demographic and began to put the project together. The families were described as impoverished, so the institute used gift cards as incentives in exchange for their participation in the study, which some critics described to be a form of subtle coercion. The ones who accepted the offer were given a single $125 gift card to Toys R Us. You can determine for yourself if this payment was worth it later when I describe the experiments. Finally, researchers had their candidates for the study, 34 boys, all black or Hispanic. Only one thing. The Hispanic portion of the study group were in fact black Dominicans, Spanish speakers with a dark complexion. Now, just to backtrack and clarify a little bit, the study was to research biological predictors of aggression in young boys who had a specific condition, or at least that's what would be required for the research to be approved in the first place. So what was their condition? The Institute's director, John Oldham, stated that the research involved brain chemistry studies on minority children whose older siblings had been arrested. In other words, their condition was that they were at increased risk of developing antisocial or violent behavior simply due to being related to someone who was a convicted criminal. And what exactly did the study consist of? The protocol was that the kids followed a specific diet before fasting for 18 hours prior to going in for the study. Once they went in, the boys received an intravenous catheter into their arm at 8.30 a.m. and blood samples were collected over the next several hours. They were then given a drug in order to stimulate and measure serotonin levels in the brain. The more serotonin, the more likely to engage in antisocial or violent behavior, they believed. The drug they were given was fenfluramine, which was most commonly known as half of the diet drug combination that was booming in the 90s, known as fenfen, at least until the diet drug was recalled. Medical alert. This is an update to the millions of people who used FenFen in the past. People are still being diagnosed with serious heart and lung conditions due to the effects of this drug. Chicago area women are taking the makers of FenFen to court. It's been one week since the prescription diet drug was pulled off the market. FenFen was banned by the FDA in 1997, but fenfluramine was still being used within brain chemistry studies. The children in this specific study were given a single dose of a 10 mg fenfluramine hydrochloride, and when criticized over this, a spokesperson for the institute said that a single dose of fenfluramine posed no risk to the boys. However, a 1996 medical study published by the Society of Biological Psychiatry stated that a single dose of fenfluramine had been shown to result in side effects in 90% of adults, including fatigue, headaches, lightheadedness, and difficulty concentrating. 
Evidence had also been shown that fenfluramine caused brain damage to animals, and there had never been a study to show that it was safe for children at the time. Once their study was over, researchers concluded that there was, in fact, increased odds that a child who witnessed violence would himself commit violence, and that harsh parenting can negatively alter brain chemistry. But this undoubtedly is, and has essentially been proven to be true for all races. So why were only black children selected for the experiment? Once called out over this, the researchers said that their study demographics were limited due to budget, and that the nearby population from which they were recruiting was an unfortunate accident of geography. The deputy director said, if our institute was located in Iowa, the subjects would have all been white. Yeah, he really said that. But critics disputed this, stating that some of the subjects were discovered to have been recruited from as far away as Brooklyn. They also asked the question, if they had sought the confidential information of a majority white juvenile delinquent populace, would they have gotten the same willingness to cooperate from the probation authorities, or the same leeway from their internal review board and the federal government? After news broke of this and media began scrutinizing the study, the feds launched an investigation. The Office for Protection from Research Risks, or OPRR, investigated the Institute for Alleged Racial Discrimination, Unjust Recruiting, and the use of fenfluramine in healthy children. But the OPRR determined that based on the conditions of the children, the risks posed by the study were justified. Remember, there was no official medical condition and the children were physically healthy, albeit living in impoverished and potentially abusive environments. Additionally, the OPRR failed to address exactly what condition the boy suffered from. They also failed to address the method of collecting potential candidate information from confidential sources, which was prohibited by New York law. So was this just a misfortune of geographical location, or were they purposefully seeking out the poor, unknowing, and vulnerable to study in the name of science? Comment down below what you think. In conclusion, the child subjects got a Toys R Us gift card and lived out their lives. The study survived peer review, attained publication, and besides a few critical articles from the late 90s, hasn't been spoken much about since, and the world kept on spinning. If you found value in this video, please drop a like, share with a friend, and or hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support, and for 800 subscribers. I'll see you next time, and as always, thank you for watching. The relentless pursuit of scientific truth is a noble endeavor, but not so noble that it exempts us from our deeper obligations to be moral and just.